Welcome to Koskinen Stadium, the home of the Duke Blue Devils here in Durham, North Carolina, where the fifth-ranked Blue Devils take on an upstart top 20 team in the nation in the Boston University Terriers. The Terriers roll into Koskinen red hot and look to find their fourth straight win, their second straight against a top five team in the country. Welcome into the booth with former Duke attackman David Keefe. My name's Connor Young, and like I just said, a top 20 matchup here in Durham, highly anticipated, and it sure could shake up the NCAA Division I standings. Yeah, we have the, the Terriers in here, sunny Durham, right? Torrential rainstorm. Yeah. They believe they can beat anyone in the country. And then you have the Duke Blue Devils, a perennial great team right now who has two losses, one recently against Syracuse, but then redeemed themselves against Denver. Re this is going to be a very exciting game. It absolutely is. And like you said, David, they have proven the Terriers they can beat any team in the country. Just one game ago, they toppled the then first-ranked Army Black Knights and handed them their first loss this yeah, And they did it through great, great goaltending by Barnes and as well as a really, really uh, you know, concerted effort by their veteran attackers who are amazing feeders and dodgers. And they really are able to put together the right goal at the right time in any game. Control tempo, look for that high probability shot, and then bring it home. So, you know, we're looking at a really good matchup today with two great great teams and you know with the Terriers they're they're playing at the top of their game they absolutely are and you see Will Barnes 15 saves on the day just an outstanding performance someone that Duke has been used to getting outstanding performances for a while now how about Brennan O'Neill for the Blue Devils number one priority to stop for the Boston defense yeah there's you can't say much more about uh, O'Neill that's already been said MVP from last year's world games you know you have to put a lot of attention on him which leaves open opportunities for the other players on the Duke roster you know, and at this, at this point, we're just going to see where it goes in this torrential rainstorm. Let's quickly turn our attention to the face-off percentages for both these teams before we get underway. Something that definitely favors the home team in the Blue Devils. In both of their losses to Bryan and Navy earlier this season, Boston outdone on the face-off. Something that could be an X factor for yeah, Boston today. Terriers coach, when we talked to him this week, Coach Pauly said he really wanted to o open up and, and really make sure they're maximizing their possessions through faceoff. Um, and then, you know, obviously this rain makes every possession extremely important. It could be a sloppy game, so you really want to think through what you're doing with the ball, when you have it, and how that can, helps to control the tempo. Yeah, the grounds crew has been out with the squeegees for just about an hour now trying to get this field as game ready as possible. But as we talked about before the game here off camera, David already, it's going to impact the game in so many different levels. And a quick shot. Yep. Barnes with the save. Beautiful play. Well executed, moving the ball around. You know, that was that's sort of what the Devils want to do. Um, I don't think that that was a bad play at all. It was just a really great shot right on the doorstep. And, um, you know, I think this is the kind of back and forth battle we're going to see today. Without Will Barnes, the Terriers do not pick up their first win over the top ranked team in the country in program history, as we've already talked about. He was fantastic in the cage for BU in that game. So far, the first shot he sees just as good. Yeah, you know, we, this is going to be a goalie battle today. You know, we're looking at Jameson is at 60%, which is stratospheric. And then Barnes is right, right, right around 58%. So you have two, I would say, premier goalies playing at the top of their game right now. And um, But uh, the space in front of the goal is going to be a real question mark. And you can see right there, you know, we're going to have assignments where defenders are going to be have, have, having to go through all of those kinds of muddy conditions. As we take a look at a couple plays to kick us off, the first one, the save from Barnes, and then who else on the other end but Perfetto to kick things off here for the Terriers? Yeah, he brings it around. He gets a little bit of a step right here in these muddy conditions. You can see that right now. That's what we're. That's going to be the X factor, I think, today because it, there is just literally about an inch and a half of rain on the ground around the crease. Perfetto leads the Patriot League in goals per game, assists per game, and points per game. You're not going to find a better well-rounded, complete offensive threat in the Patriot League than Perfetto, and good luck finding one in the whole country. And he showcases right there that offensive firepower as Boston with possession once again. Yep. And so they, they really wanted to make sure that they were able to get some wing support on those face-offs. Um, and that was a great example right there where they were able to get in there and get that, that heady ground ball and, uh, and gain possession. Boston looks to set up shop for the second time today. Perfetto kicking things off in the scoring department for the Terriers. And these conditions make the, you know make sliding much more 
treacherous um, and uh, you know so all of this you know the footwork is going to be really important behind the net shot there Jameson picks it up clears it out we've talked a lot about Boston's last game coming into Durham Duke comes into this midday matchup with record of 9-2 and two on the season 0-1 mark in ACC competition after they topped the Denver Pioneers 11 to 7, you know, another ranked win on the other end for Duke and, yeah. and a statement win at that. Yeah, it was. You know, they had to come back from, um, you know, the loss in the dome when they really underperformed offensively. But what we saw in the game uh, against uh, the Denver Pioneers was that there was really balanced effort across the way you know, in, on the offense. And it wasn't just Brennan O'Neill, but it, it was across the board in the midfield and the attack. Duke looking to answer from the X. Shot. Whizzes out of the stick far wide, not able to get enough on it there with Zawada as he was looking to curl and fire. So another X factor you're going to see today is that the, the wetness of the of the mesh in the stick yep. can cause the ball to sit too long on shots um, and can really impact how the ball was released point of entry from the stick. So um, watch from some shots that look like they're way off mark because a lot of times that's just that's just the mechanics of the fabric. Nice pass in. Barnes out to defend. How about Barnes? We talked about him against Army. Just as hot of a start here against Duke and Durham, although a turnover could be collapsed on by the Blue Devils. The ground ball given up. Barnes, back-to-back -back close range saves. Yeah, a hot goalie can really be, a, you know, something that is, um, you know, obviously uh, unpredictable and... Um, you know, uh, I think there's also a probing element in this first quarter that the Blue Devils have to really look at uh, now that they can see where he's making his shots right on the doorstep, how they're placing their shots better. Boston not turning the ball over. They will stay with possession. 11 minutes left to go. The Terriers look to set up once again. Score! Back-to-back -back goals for the visiting Boston University Terriers. Jimmy Core, the sophomore, gets his name in the score sheet. That was really a uh, well-executed goal there. One-on-one uh, -on -one effort um, came up, got to goal line extended, and then uh, just a quick quick turn in as he comes to goal line extended. He sees a little bit of the overcommitment there, and he pulls out, pulls a little bit of an inside roll, uh, protects his stick, and is able to get that right over the shoulder of Jamison. Beautiful play. Beautiful roll, Jack Gray in defense. That's the second goal of the season for Core and the second goal of the game for Boston with just under 11 minutes left to go. We talked about how the faceoff was gonna play a huge role in this one. Finally, Duke able to pull one out as it's a self-control for Naso. Duke successful on the clear. And they'll answer back right away. Quick strike offense for the Duke Blue Devils as they make their way past the 30 into the attacking end and waste no time depositing the rubber in the back of the net. Yeah, we, we talked to... Looks like they were, they were looking at a full press ride there and Jamison just said, I'll decide. And he becomes the, you know, uh, the assister on this, on this goal. O'Neill takes it in. You're not gonna stop him with your body. And he is also a sharpshooter. Put it right over the far side shoulder of Barnes for a beautiful goal. When O'Neill gets in that dangerous of position, good luck. I don't care what netminder you are, it's going to be a tough day. Yeah, I mean, and then that was just a heady play by Jamison to be able to see that. Um, Coach Pauly said last uh, yesterday when he spoke to him, they're going to deploy full pressure rides, 10-man rides, and they're going to they're going to really make the the Blue Devils work for it. So that's those kinds of long plays are risky, but they're going to be open. And Jamison has showcased his ability to outlet quickly and join the offense as well as be one of the better goaltenders in between the pipes, all while being just a freshman. Yeah, I mean, what a gem the Blue Devils have found in Jamison. Well, they say, you know, a, a, goal, a goalie is the first offensive player. Yep. You know, and, that's, and that is, you know, once they make the save, they are, they're really initiating the offense. And that was a perfect example. Now you're looking right now at a lot of sloppy, sloppy conditions down on the crease. And um, you're going to see a lot of these forced passes where it's a foot matter of like getting your footing, making sure that you, the guys you're passing to can get their footing. And so it's, it's going to be a little bit of a sloppy affair. And I think that the team with poise is going to be able to do better, obviously, for, uh, in those situations. 
Perfetto was looking for the pass. Can't go stick to stick as Duke will take over. I mean, you can see the amount of water that's splashing up around their cleats just when they're, even when they're moving at just slow speeds. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of rain that's, uh, that's fallen on this field. McGuire with possession still. So they've got a little bit of a man advantage there. McAdory trying to get that to Barnes, and now we got quick offense the other way. McAdory took the ball with a full head of steam, and he let one fire. Barnes able to stop the shot before it bounces off the turf. And we talked about that as well earlier today, David. In conditions like this, with the turf as soaked as it is, you really don't know where the ball is going to go once it finds the carpet. Yeah, if, if, if the, you know, there, there's sort of three scenarios. If the ball hits at a, at a downward angle, it's going to slow it down. It's going to break its momentum. But if it gets I don't know, from a sideways angle and skips, um, it actually will take off and accelerate, almost like skipping uh, stones on a, on a lake. And then the last one is, depending on the amount of mud in there, it could hit something and the whole trajectory of the shot changes. So a goalie has a read on it, but it changes the angle. It goes, you know, and it goes in a completely different direction. So those three things are likely to be happening today as the goalies sift through this, this, this swamp of a field. A save from Jamison. Gives the Blue Devils opportunity with possession. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 50 seconds and counting as we tick under eight minutes here in the game clock of the first quarter, where the Terriers lead two to one over the fifth ranked Blue Devils. Yeah. Balsamo, way over as we continue to see the rain play a factor in trying to release these shots. Yeah, I mean that one also, he, he, he lost his footing. So it could have been his stick, it could have been his footing, but you're gonna see a lot of these. I think that both teams are gonna be wise to take very controlled shots yep. and, and, and make sure that they're literally like the ones that Barnes stopped, but he can't stop all those all day right up on the doorstep. So, um, but that, that is going to be the key because it's very um, the, you know, sloppy conditions here. O'Neal on the far side. O'Neal ball in his stick. Looking to String three passes together. Scooped up by a Blue Devil in perfect position. Dyson Williams, the graduate attackman. The ball falls at his feet, and it doesn't take long for him to launch it. As that evens things up. Yeah. So Dyson Williams is a, you know, he's a box player, always in the right place at the right time. Quick, quick to get to the ball, quick to release it, puts it in past Barnes. An amazing shot. Beautiful goal. Welcome right back into the action here in Durham as Duke with another face-off win as Naso gets two back-to-back -back as the Blue Devils start mounting the early comeback here in the first quarter. Talked about Boston University coming into Koskinen on a roll, winning three straight, and they continued to roll through the first three minutes in passing. Yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a mud pit here, and there's going to be a lot. Like, that last goal was an opportunistic goal, but, you know, you take it in a game like this. You know, the, all that matters is the ball crosses the goal line, and a lot of times it's not pretty. It doesn't matter how it happens. In that case, Dyson was in the right place at the right time, picked up a nice rebound, and, you know, again, right there. Boston University answers right back. Back-to-back -back scores for the Blue Devils quickly. The streak is answered as the Terriers. You wouldn't know it by how fast this program has risen to meteoric heights, but this is a new Boston University lacrosse program which has catapulted themselves onto the national stage overnight, it feels. Yeah, no, Coach Polly's doing a great job. And uh, interestingly, 10 years ago, it was their first season, and they lost in a game where the goalie had, uh, BU goalie had 25 saves, and um, the Duke um, only uh, beat them by two goals. So this is um, one of those things where you, you, you can really see um, so many different elements of this program where they're for real. You saw the resume of head coach Polly, the 2022 Patriot League Coach of the Year as he leads Boston University into Durham, North Carolina. The inaugural coach of the program 
all the way back in its inception and has, boy has the Terriers flourished since he's taken over as this program continues to get better and better with each passing season. At this point, just a perennial contender in the Patriot League. It's really been fun to watch this program rise to the top as that shot goes wide. And you see how far he slid after that shot. Just showing once again the playing surface that these two teams are having to deal with today. It's an absolute downpour and a similar type day to what we saw Duke have to face when they took on Penn earlier this season. Unfortunately, that you know that game was for the Devils. Um, you know they weren't able to uh, to really to run out of clock at the end of the game, but it was a torrential rainstorm, and you know you can see this. Every everyone is slipping and sliding all over the place. Penn, the number 17 ranked team at the time as well, just like Boston is coming into Durham. So a couple parallels between that matchup and this one today already showcasing themselves but for the Blue Devils and Coach Dan Dunkowski they're definitely hoping for a different result. You can see how, how the ball slows down there broken uh, broken um, clear by uh, by by um, Duke there they were able to get it over but not enough time and um, great job by BU they said they were going to bring the pressure this this game on the on the middle third of the field and uh, really jam that center for these uh, for the clears for Duke. So um, they're executing their game plan pretty well, and they've I would say the the possession is slightly in favor at this point um, with uh, BU, but it's a close game. Skip shot in, backed up by the Terriers. They'll keep possession. And to your point, David, this is a BU team that has been known for making the clearance difficult. They pride themselves on their ride and coming in to the game, BU leads the nation and caused turnovers per game the last two seasons and is off to another strong start in 2024, yeah. ranking first in the nation in that same statistical category. Their ride is one of the toughest to break in college lacrosse as you're gonna see the referees meet at the 30 to talk things over here. Yeah, I think the they tried to call a timeout um, The BU coach did before the check went down to the ground and the coach closest said the ball had already hit, left the stick so they, they did not have possession, could not call a timeout. They were trying to preserve this, the, the, preserve that a little bit. And um, yeah, you can see the ball gets knocked out, dislodged. And at this point they, they were trying to call a timeout right then and that you can't do that if you don't have the ball. So McAdory with the ball right now. He's again, he's, he's up against a number of guys here who's coming in down, they get it to one of their long stick midfielders and they're gonna move it backside with Brendan O'Neill. Um, and you know, I think right now that the Blue Devils have to put together a concerted effort to uh, move the ball, let a lot of guys touch it and be able to um, get some time of possession even if it doesn't lead, lead to a goal because it keeps the ball at that end of the field. Boston has certainly looked threatening each trip down. You can see Ben Johnson and Sloat all in there. Um, the ball gets slowed down in that wet crease, and Barnes has it right there, clearing the ball. So looking good. If you're at BU, you really like that possession um, and how things just went, but um, Duke's got to get a better shot when they're in close. Uh, Barnes is actually owning them right now in that, um, you know, in that like two or three foot range of the goal, of the, of the, of the crease and the goal line extended. So far today, Duke actually out shooting the Terriers, nine to seven, five of the nine shots for the Blue Devils on cage. Yeah, and Coach Polly, you know, he said one of the things when we were talking to him y yes, yesterday, he said, you know, I, the thing I fear most is we could play with these guys, but then they can go on incredible runs where before you know it, it's, you know, it's a 4-3 game or a 3-2 game, and then all of a sudden it's 10 to two Duke. So that was one of the things that he said, you know, he really wants to try to focus on making sure that any runs that happen can be limited. Um, again, we're in totally uncharted territories with this field being as wet as it is. Duke has certainly proven their high-powered offense that, you know, you can blink and you can miss it. They can go up in a close game. They've scored over 20 in several affairs already this season, four games to be exact, and the Blue Devils have scored multiple goals within 60 seconds of each other 27 times this season, kind of going to that breakneck speed this offense can play with as a feed in. 
get things working for the Blue Devils as they really try to crack this Boston defense that has had their number their last couple of possessions. Yeah, I think one of the things that I would be looking to do is just basic change of direction dodges from behind to see if you could get that defenseman who, who slips, who falls down, who, you know, who, do, who isn't able to, to stay with you. And then that opens up um, a wraparound where you're one-on-one -on -one with the goalie. But, you know, you have to test that. Um, you have to test that out and see if you could just get simple plays and use this bad sloppy conditions in order to get, you know, a defender the falling down in the middle of your dodge. The pass from Williams mishandled. Unforced turnover. The Terriers will be the beneficiaries of as they'll look to go out on the clear. A minute 20 left to go here in the first quarter as Boston leads 3-2. Have possession on the far side, just outside the 30. Miles Lipton carries it to the near side now. Lipton will pass it off. You know, for you know BU, they know they just came off beating the number one team in the nation, which was Army, and they did it by poise and tempo and is really applying a you know, a real method to their to their game approach. And uh, and I think that is what you're seeing here now. They're, very, they're being very judicious about how they go about things. They're using the clock, man you know, clock, clock management well, and they're attacking on their terms when they want to. Um, so I just want, I, I, would, I would contrast to that to a little bit of a sloppy pay by Duke on their offensive side. Now that was a great possession working for a high probability shot. That was uh, probably a push on the goalie from behind an interference play, but I'm not going to pretend that I'm a referee, but that was, um, it looked like it was a little bit egregious. With Perfetto on the shot as Duke looks to answer back in a hurry. Yeah. Brennan O'Neill with another shot. So, you know, that's a quick possession, and, you, and, that's, and that's a, you know, something that they want to make sure that they're, that they're getting, but there's no backup on that. You know, they, uh, they really need to make sure that there's some kind of uh, organized backup. It's a sloppy, dreary day here in Durham and a sloppy game on the field so far. Boston University has taken the advantage as they lead 3-2 to two after the first quarter. More ACC versus Patriot League action on tap when we come back. As well here, obviously you've got perennial powers like Yale and Mi and and Maryland, and then you know great teams like Michigan who are playing really well this season. Um, so, you know, I, I think there's a ton of lacrosse still to be played, and there's there's really not as many open uh, you know answered questions yet in terms of the automatic qualifiers, you know, brackets and who makes it. There's so much lacrosse to be played yet. Yeah, and something that's certainly going to set the landscape, and we'll continue to talk about this throughout the broadcast, is of course comp conference competition continuing to be more and more a factor as the season continues to go on underway. This is the last non-conference affair for Duke. Boston will have one more, yeah. David, but that's really going to continue to set the landscape for what that top 25 is going to look like. Yeah, and it's nice that, you know, uh, there's going to be an ACC championship, which right. we used to have back in the day, and that's coming back now. With uh, four, They're bringing four teams um, to that, so that'll um, have some impact on on uh, the end of season uh, determinations from bracket standpoint and things of that nature. Beautiful, beautiful goal. The freshman, Ben Johnston, finds the equalizer for Duke as we're all knotted up at 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. As you take another look ben, here. Yeah, Ben comes around on a, on a basically a swing dodge, and he's coming around, and he sees that he's got space. You know, that defender should have, he can't just play him with a stick. He's got to be on his hands with that stick to interfere with that shot. And when Johnson has that much room and space, he's going to take it. It, t it did take that little sh uh, skip off of the really d uh, damp, um, um, you know, two or three feet in front of the crease, and it just skipped right in. Hit low and stayed low, but accelerated. Um, interestingly, as it took off. So let's see if Duke turns this one of those runs that Coach Polly was fearing. Yeah, that was exactly my thought, David, to see if Duke can kind of keep their foot on the gas pedal as they've proven they can do throughout the season. Once they find one, hit the twine. It's usually a matter of time before they follow it up with a couple scores and bunches, something that Coach Polly, well aware of, like you said, he, or he mentioned that to us earlier this week, and that's something that he's desperately trying to avoid here against the Blue Devils. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think when you really look at uh, clock management, you know, you, you can see that many teams that score 
you know, in the the, the majority of their goals in the then they're starting to be able to break this down and look and say, you know, do are there teams that score quickly, teams that score, you know, pretty far into the clock or teams that score late into the clock. And the teams that manage the ball, manage yep. the manage the clock usually have a higher percentage of scoring. Um, by letting the offense sort of settle in and breathe a little bit. That's not to say that you're not going to have run and gun situations where you really want to leg it out. But in conditions like this, you can't do that. Looking for the sh drop shot, dropping the angle. However, the defense good enough to dissuade Papendick. Yeah, it was it was actually a, a really nice look, and I just think with the conditions being as wet as they are, that ball got looked like it got stuck in his stick. Yeah. Um, you know, he couldn't get it out. And I, you know, I, I know what that's like. The, the mesh gets so wet that it almost becomes uh, something that grips the ball and it doesn't freely move out of the stick. We knew the weather today was going to be a huge factor. I mean, we've seen players slipping and sliding around. It's a proverbial slip and slide out there in Koskinen Stadium. It and is. And that's why I, I think if, you're, if, I, if I'm playing attack, you know, you're just trying to get like a left, like that, like a quick left-right dodge, and if you can get your defender to fall down, you've got an open path to the goal, like that right there. You can see the adjustment on the defenders. It's very hard on just a quick change of direction, left-right. There you go. That's an open shot, and wasn't able to get too much on it, but good battle from the freshman Jamison to try to get back there. He's not going to be the one to back it up. Dialto will look to go quickly here. And yeah, to that point, you know better than just about anyone, David, but it seems like it would be really hard to kind of get that pivot foot down, to have those quick bursts of movements that attackmen are looking for when you're playing on such a slippery surface. Well, remember, when you're playing lacrosse and you're on offense, you know where you want to go. That's yep. your advantage, right? And so you so when it, you automatically, by virtue of the fact that you know where you want to go, you have a step on your defender. The issue is, can you make a change of direction fast enough to make them actually lose, lose a step and then actually fall behind and then you can you know, get your way to the goal. What you want to do with Duke right now, you see a lot of their folks are down low and sort of bunched up. If I was Duke, I would I would spread it out because if you do get someone falling down, you have a lot of room to run to that goal, right? A lot of room to draw that double team and make better passes. But if you're all bunched up, it gets just a little bit too, too, too clunky down there. McAdory working his way in. Now working behind Barnes to the Blue Devils. See? You, and you, by, by being so close together, you're, you're, you're forcing the slides, um, and the slides are going to be a lot shorter. It's easier for the defense to react. So maybe some spacing would help them a little bit. Um, again, look at the, blood, look at the, 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 mud, the mud bath down there. O'Neal with a long-range shot backed up by the Blue Devils as they continue to lead in shots. Total is Barnes with another save. Yeah, and that ball right there died a little bit. It died and helped Barnes out instead of, instead of you know, uh, you know, flummoxing him or you know, doing a change up. It actually died just a bit into the uh, into the mud, and it helped him. That's a beautiful check right there. 14 to 10 in shots. 15 to 10 now, following that last one for the Blue Devils. And we see some physical defense from both teams. That was a good clean hit. Going to get a whistle as both teams' head coaches make their cases, and we'll take another look at the hit here. Yeah, and you know they're going to they're going to look at that and they say possibly to the head, um, and there was uh, you know contact to the head coming up um, as I think he it's one of those things where he hit body to body, but he slid up into the head range. Um, it wasn't a full cross check, it didn't uh, to the head. It was just one of those you know body to body. Um, little helmet on helmet, but they don't really, that's not something that's in more in football um, than here in lacrosse, but it can happen, obviously. And that physical defensive play on the ride, kind of the calling card hey, response. The the Boston University, that time comes Luke back Davis. to bite him. So this is a good chance to see what spacing, normally man up is about sp staying spaced out. This is a good opportunity to see what I was just talking about before. If you keep a, a space and distance, how much room do you have to actually get good passes to the right people at the right time? 
Nice feed in and a quick score. Wasting no time on the man advantage is head coach John Donowski's Blue Devils as they will take their first lead of the contest with just under 10 minutes left to go in quarter number two. Yeah, and that was just a classic move of the ball around and then a nice, a nice little skip right down from top over down to Dyson. And that was a skip, you know, around from the adjacent all the way down and on the doorstep. And so those kinds of opportunities are going to be open more because it's harder to slide in these muddy conditions, right? And obviously they're man down in that situation too. So they're player down. Um, it's uh, those those are um, things you have to capitalize in a rainy conditions like today. Yeah, Williams finds some room just to sink away from the defense. A little bit more room in the attacking end as they were on the man advantage, and then. Once he gets that close, Williams, once again. So this is a key possession, because if they are able to show poise here and you know, again, space it out and, and slow, you, you could start to see a building of a momentum change. If they're able to use the clock, get it down, and get a good high quality shot and get a goal here, that's gonna be a big shift, because that'll mean they've, they've had two successes at the faceoff X, followed by different uh, outcomes. As an, so that's a really smart uh, backup right there they had by, uh, by Ben Johnson. Duke with another possession and another score. Long range rifle this time. Max Loth, the sophomore, as this Duke lead will increase to two. Yep. Really nice, really nice uh, play there by, by Max Loth. Able to, uh, again, it's, it's, it's not a very complicated dodge it's you know he comes bringing it around and he's going to really do sort of a, a an alley dodge to a degree and then turn that into a, a side winded you know sort of a sort of a sweep dodge um taking what he's given no one's no one's on his hands and at that point he's got a cannon over the shoulder three-quarter shot it's going to put it right over the over the shoulder of the goalie Barnes and uh, he didn't even see it so this is we could be looking at one of those runs that uh, coach Polly feared um, where you know you go from you know a one goal game to a seven goal game but that being said there's a lot of lacrosse to play and it's sloppy and what's fueled this Duke comeback especially here in quarter number two has been their success on the faceoff now seven to three in favor of Duke really asserting their dominance on the faceoff X which is giving them more and more possessions in this offense starting to fire on all cylinders for Duke there's another one yeah, that, that, that was a, a, a shot I think he probably wants back. He got up in the air trying to do sort of a, a jump shot, or um, which is a little like a question mark, but just staying up, trying to get high. But he got high, and I think, the, again, the ball sort of stayed in his stick a little longer, and then he realized he wasn't able to get any much velocity on it. So uh, Duke did not have the backup on that. And, you know, they're looking right now. Beautiful save by Jamison. Uh, held his ground. That's one of the key things for a goalie. Held his position. Made the made the the attacker try to shoot above him, um, and uh, just and was right there. Beautiful. Takes a lot of takes a lot of uh, a, a nerve and guts to <laughs> stay there with someone shooting 90 miles an hour from five feet away. Jamison has certainly proved he has that in spades for the Blue Devils. His first save of the day coming just moments ago. Yeah, and you know, there's an old saying, you know, defense leads to offense, and you know that that many times you're going to see a team start to leverage saves by their goalie into really good possessions on the other side. There's Johnson again, moving the ball. Dyson Williams, but look at Duke; they got the backup right there. So that's 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 probably one of the things I would be really focusing on this game. Is you want to keep possession, make sure you got someone back there all the time, because it's sloppy. Johnson on the dodge. He's looked good today as he looks to go far side. Intercepted as they're not going to be able to connect on the pass as Boston showcasing why they are the best teams in the country at causing turnovers. They come up with a big one right there. Yeah, that was he yeah, he was on, you know, onto a dodge, pulled out of the dodge, was on his back foot a little bit and really didn't see that defender and tried to make a really nice skip pass. Um, which I think would have led to an, an, another good dodge, but um, wasn't able to get it through. Credit to the Terriers. Same thing right there. That's a great pass. 
another skip pass, right? So why are they doing the skip pass so much? It's because it's almost impossible to slide fast enough in the mud in order to get that caught. Vince Dialto, the graduate attackman for Boston, draws things within one as this Duke lead continues to draw lower and lower as the Terriers look to come back once again here in Koskinen. Just keep their stick and body pressure on those uh, offensive players. So Naso's picking up the ball right now, and it looks like he's going to be able to kick it up. And uh, I don't know if that was a push from behind, but there's a scrap now, a scrum, and Jameson is ha has it. So that's a that's a Naso win right there. Um, but yeah, the, uh, those, the, that was a, the, the comeback that you know it was they, they held it to. They responded, the Terriers did, but that was the comeback that they, Duke has been able to pull off. And maybe in rainy conditions, there are no eight goal, com, you know, eight goal runs. There was only three goal runs, you know? Yeah, I could definitely see that. You Although, know? with how good Naso has been playing, Duke certainly getting a lot of chances. But Boston found themselves in a similar position against Army, where they really struggled on the faceoff in that game. However, the equalizer for them caused turnovers. They were able to turn over the Black Knights a decent amount, fueled by another great performance by Barnes. You see another nice save. Yeah, nice save, but uh, reset on the shot clock. So heady play. Um, you, you know, you're playing a goalie that's going to be looking at this at 58%. He, he's going to save the majority of shots. Um, and that's why it's good to have the backup like they have right there and take a lot of shots. Um, on, but again, controlling possession, trying to get resets. They're doing all the right things. This looks like a good possession. Now, here comes the slide. They want to move it one more and try to free up the hands. McAdory's got it, putting it down right on Barnes' doorstep. But again, Barnes is there. He's ready. Shot seen cleanly by Will Barnes. Seven total saves already today. He's been tested early and often, but has been up to the job so far for Boston, and they were expecting that. They knew this high-powered offense was going to get looks at just a matter of time. However, Barnes, especially during this three-game win streak for the Terriers that they held coming into Durham, has been just about as good as any netminder in the country. Yeah, and I think they're going to need that for him to stay in, you know, for him to, st the, 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 for the Terriers to stay in the game. He has to have a, a really hot game. Um, right now, the, the Blue Devils have 23 shots to 12 shots by the, um, by the Terriers. So... Again, that was a that was that was a slip, um, and that's just going to happen right now in these conditions. Some of the some of the Terrier fans are calling for a push, but that is just a just a condition of today's play. Under four minutes left to go here in the first half of action. Brendan Kelly working with his teammate in Dialto, who we saw score the lone goal. Of the second quarter for Boston yeah, today. And the, their, their slides are going to have to come from a pretty far away. And Perfetto curling. Perfetto using the body. Good job by Perfetto to free his hands up for just a moment. He fires one off. It goes wide. But that's what Perfetto can do. Yep. And it was a great shot. That's the kind of shots they want. It, they, and eventually those will fall. But they, um, they you know, the Duke... Duke is trying to play it pretty close and letting everyone play their, their man. Um, and then they're not really sliding super aggressively. I just think it's because of the conditions. Um, you don't want to get caught in the middle in this, in this you know, sloppy swamp. Under 20 seconds on the shot clock. It's go time for the Terriers. Looking for an equalizer here. Nice pass. Stymied by Jamison, the behind the back feed. Put the Terriers in good position. Jamison answers the call. Yeah, it was great. Really, really good right there. And uh, the Devils turned it over, unfortunately, because of some sloppy passing in the middle third. And now have, uh, you know, that was a, that was a. Timeout, Boston. Yeah. Coach Ryan Poley making his way almost all the way to the half circle. Yep. Desperately looking for a timeout as he wants to talk this very vital possession over. With just under three minutes left to go, Will Barnes with seven saves today as he's replicating a fantastic performance against Army today here in Durham. Yeah, so you're going you're gonna to watch down and close. He's, his body position is already set up for really all of these really tight, tight, tight 
um, shots by excellent shooters. You know, anything on the ground, we're finding it looks like it's slowing the ball down a little bit, giving him a little more time to react. And in, the, in those cases, that, that ball right there just died in the mud and then hit him in the leg. So, you know, that's what's going to happen. You're going to get those, those good breaks. Um, so many unpredictable things are going to happen because of the five or six feet out in front of the crease and how, you know, how incredibly uh, muddy it is. So just the intangibles, you know. Both teams can either benefit from it or it could be a detriment. Barnes enters the week ranked third in the nation with 14.88 saves per game and sixth in the country with a 58 save percentage. Both of those marks leading the Patriot League. He's been as advertised today. We knew we had some of the best goaltenders in the country facing off. Yeah, and I, I, this is a game that, you know, like I, like I said, if, uh, if I was to look at it, I, the team that plays with the most composure, the least level number of turnovers, that turnover right there was a momentum killer for Duke. I and mean, in, in essence, Jameson came up with a great save. There was a behind the back shot, got it out, sloppy pass, and now momentum shift. If they score and tie it up going into this, uh, into the uh, halftime, then you're going to really uh, have, a, you know, brand new ball game. Jameson with four saves to his own right. And we saw there as both these teams were getting ready to take the field again out of the timeout. Just the mud caked on the jerseys, the legs of these players. And they're trying they're trying to get that 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 just quick left right um, dodge to get the off get a little bit off balance and then be able to either continue to find a shot like this. This is Perfetto and you see the slipping and the sliding. Don't know if that was necessarily a foul of any sort. I didn't really see that. Um, he did fall down. Perfetto eventually does get a whistle, I believe. We'll take another look here. Yeah, so here he's a go. Good defense, good body position, and then he falls. And yeah, no contact there on the head, and the, the flag had already been thrown at that point, so I, I didn't see any foul there. I just saw I just saw him slipping. And much as we've talked about it being a tough day out there for the players, I mean a tough day for the officials too. I mean to try to differentiate between what's a trip, what's a slip. What was it? trip? So yeah, it looked like the long stick of Will Frasoli tripped up Perfetto. I did I did think I saw some contact with the leg. It was hard to tell if it was warranting a trip or not. Nevertheless, that's the call and there's the score. Dialto draws things even once again as the Terriers and Blue Devils having trouble separating from each other in this back and forth affair. Yeah, this is uh, just, just a nice nice play. You see that that ball struck low and stayed low. Jameson probably might be able to have that on a normal day. That would actually drop, come up and be about waist high. But today it hits, skips, and accelerates. And uh, beautiful play by the, uh, by the uh, Terriers. D'Alto now just four goals away from becoming the program's all-time leading goal scorer. She came into the game six away from that all-time mark, drawing closer with each passing game. One, that's a mark you expect him to eclipse by season's end as Duke now with possession. Uh, Duke has had uh, two turnovers. One when, the, when it was down here last, and, they th uh, and uh, I think it was Johnson or Sloat, Threw it across field and tried to, um, and it was picked off and brought down. Score, and then this last score right here was the result of the turnover in the middle third of the field after a Jamison save, and then obviously this man up. So you could just see how, you know, turnovers lead to, you know, advantages for the other team, and if they're wise, they capitalize on them by being patient. Let's see if the Devils can do the same thing right now. Just about a minute and counting, a little more than that left here in the second half. And like you said, Coach Zanowski wants nothing more than to go into halftime with a lead for the Blue Devils. A lot of physical defense, active sticks yeah. defending the crease. I think one of the problems that I'm seeing right here is that, that Zawad is trying to feed standing there. And um, it's very difficult because they're reading him. And what you really want to do is exactly make a move and actually draw people, force them, force them to move in order to create some kind of uh, opportunity, a shot from Brennan O'Neill, what have you. A long-range rifle comes through for Duke, but Barnes 
much like against Army, there's been one main reason why Boston is in this game, and it's the man in the crease. It's Barnes. He's been fantastic. Yeah, he has he has been really. And again, though, one of, one of the things I, I think when we watch this in review, we're going to see that that Zawada is 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 standing there behind, and he's trying to be a feeder. The, yep. the thing is that it's easy for the other team to react to it. Whereas when you look at BU, they're they're attacking, going one on one, trying to draw, get a defender to fall on the ground, trying to have some kind of of of, of uncertainty happen. And then once they do do that, then they go to the goal. At, and they try to, and they try to, they, you know, they, they create some kind of reaction. So, I, I just think it's a little bit of a one, you know, again, Boston, Boston is a little bit more p patient and methodical right now, and um, Duke is playing a little bit sort of predictable. We've talked a lot about the last matchup for the Boston Terriers against Army. Let's take a look at the game against Denver for Duke, where a lot of players getting into the score sheet. The Blue Devils certainly sharing the medicine against Denver. Yeah, it was a very balanced game, and you know, and it and it started out that way, and it just continued on and on. You know, Brendan O'Neill had three goals, but you'd like to see the sharing of the rock and a lot of the different, you know, uh, different different goal scoring responsibilities across the midfield and the attack. O'Neill, Sloat, Johnston, Williams all getting in on the action again today. We've got 30 seconds to work with here for the Terriers as they'll start things off on the far side. We're all knotted up 5-5. Five, five. This top 20 pairing has lived up to the reputation as it's been an absolute heavyweight bout. Here we go. So they're going to go at about 10 seconds. And, you know, they have something, that's some kind of post and pick looking at Jameson. I don't think they're going to be able to get anything going at this point. Five seconds, but they have to actually really, really look. Nice play by Jameson. He's going to bring that down. And it defended beautifully by McGuire and the netminder for the Blue Devils. And it's been a sloppy, messy, physical game here in Durham as both these teams claw for a victory. They both look to climb up the NCAA ladder. And we've got the second half right around the corner. Join us back on the ACC Network. To no matter which way this thing goes, you got to think if you're Boston, if they come out with the win when things are all said and done here in Durham, it's going to be off the back of a continued stellar barn performance where Duke one of their biggest advantages in this game coming into it, and it's stayed true throughout the contest, has been on the faceoff as they win another one to open up yep. the second half. And Nace is on. And you see, you know, he stays in as an offensive threat. And, you know, this is something they worked on. They wanted him to be more than a FOGO, so they kept, he missed fall ball this year, and they worked on his offense. No, no face off, offs taken so that he could stay on the field, be an offensive threat. And here he is. He, no one's going to pick him up because he's a FOGO, but. He's a Fogo with a lot more offensive training, and he puts it right there, and it hits low, stays low, offside on Barnes, and beautiful shot, beautiful play. Don't fall into the trap of thinking Jake Naso is just a face-off guy. He is much more than that. As you see, his second goal of the season, he often is the fire starter of this offense. He'll take it off the face-off and head all the way down on the clearance by himself. And this time, he does a little bit more than that, potting a goal, and not just any goal, a go-ahead to open up the second yeah. half here for Duke. And the Devils the Devils really wanted that momentum, and th that was an opportunistic turnover right there that they were able to get. Let's see, though. Look how many people are in the middle third. If you're looking, watching from home, they're packed in it right now in the middle third. And what does that do? You have to make a lot of these short passes with a lot of people on you in order to get down the field in, in, in the right you know, amount of time. Um, but the Devils were able to break that, that ride, which is, which is something they haven't been able to do. Great roll, a lot of contact. Shot goes wide, backed up by Duke. Two good backups there, options. That's why Brennan O'Neill saw that as he was making his turn, so he's decided to go to the goal and uh, maybe draw a, a foul, a push, but get a good angle shot and um, try stopping him on goal line and extend it. It's, uh, it's, it's, no, I've never done it, but I, I've never seen anyone really be able to reliably do it. Duke with another chance here. One thing I love about Brennan O'Neill is we'll see a shot saved by Barnes. Barnes. Good rebound control as he had a Terrier with him to help him out. Although a cause turnover here for Duke is going to give them another possession potentially. They will keep it in, or will they? 
<laughs> this ball slipping and sliding all around the turf as still neither team able to come up with it. Eventually, the Devils do. Heady play. Heady play. And, you know, so this is where, you know, you, you out hustle, you get that ground ball. Great play, great, great save by Barnes. Don't know if I would have rushed it like that. Um, the feed from behind, and you know, you got a lot of guys who are involved in that ground ball. They're dead tired, <laughs> so you want to get the subs in, you know, and 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 move the ball out. So you know, great that they got it, but I might want to hold on to that. Get the right people on the field, and do it in a way that's, uh, you know going to yield the best results. Terriers working it around. They find their man. And he finds his mark. Vince D'Alto with another for the Boston Terriers. We're back evened up. Yes, it's a beautiful ball movement here. One, two, three, then a skip pass. And you're going to see a lot of that because the, when it's raining conditions like this, it's very hard to slide from the, from the adjacents once that happens because you're already rotating. It's too wet and um, they're they're really attacking that backside skip pass, and then this, you have not a wide open shot, but a, a pretty pretty uh, pretty high probability shot. How about the career Dialto has put together while in Boston? His 32nd career hat trick. It's, it's a great feed from Kelly on the skip pass, like you mentioned, David, and he takes care of the rest. The hat trick registered for Dialto as they've leaned on their superstars heavily had the Terriers as they have all season long. Yeah, so, so um, Jack Rowlett is the defensive coach for the for the Terriers, right? And he has it set up right now where they're not really playing and putting pressure behind. And why is that important? They're clogging up the middle. And so Duke's got to decide if they want to feed from behind into a clogged area or they want to drive the ball and go one-on-one -on -one in order to find that opportunities where they can have a defenseman fall down or left-right dodge like that by Aiden Denenza and then get it to their open player. That was to Balsamo, wasn't quite ready to shoot, and now to over to O'Neal. But you'll notice Zawada's behind and no one's playing him. Uh, they don't, wouldn't necessarily play him if he was behind, but um, there's really not a lot of uh, attention there. Draw is a foul, and then you have again... Scrum for possession in the middle of the mud, but the flag on the ground against Boston, like you mentioned, David, O'Neal took the chance to fire one off as this is going to go against the Terriers. There was two cross checks, I believe, that came through. I believe the second ruled a little too over eager is that's going to draw a penalty in favor of the Devils. Yeah, so Balsamo has the ball and it, yeah, it was a cross check from behind with possession. Should be one minute and um, yeah, it's a pretty straightforward call. Sophomore Huntley picking it up. So yeah, I, th I think that, you, know, you, you, you see two different tactics being deployed on offense and defense by Duke and by um, and by the Terriers. Uh, but the, the last man up possession that they had, the Devils did. They really took their time and had a really nice conversion. So let's see what happens now. Again, they also in that last conversion relied on the on the skip pass, which means not to the folks on your adjacent, but it's cross cross field almost uh, to try to find that open player. So let's see what they do. We saw Boston score just that way moments ago. Duke Correct now looking to go out in front once again. Should be 60 seconds for a slash. It's actually a slash rather than a cross check, so it's going to be a full minute for Duke to work with on the man up. So a little bit of a clarification there on the call, and it also goes against DeGoler instead of Huntley. There's a skip down. Nice find and a score. And you, you, you see, it's just very hard for them to adjust. So again, it wasn't to the adjacent side, it was to the adjacent player. It was two, two players over, it was O'Neal who moved it one more. They just ran out of defensive players right there. See, so he, he gets it, and bam, right on the doorstep. There's the skip, down to J, down to Dyson, and you're one-on-one -on -one with Dyson Williams. Although he's, uh, uh, you know, uh, Barnes has made a number, saved against, a number of saves against him today, um, that, that one, was wide open for him. A hat trick for the veteran Dialto on one side. Similar story on the other for Dyson Williams. He picks up his third as well today. Leading on the veteran leadership in more ways than one. Both Coach Poli and Donowski. 
Boston comes up with a pivotal face-off win. That's been rare for them to find, especially as this game's continued to draw on. It's been more and more of a statistic that favors the Blue Devils. That's a big one to try to answer back. So you see, we're playing behind man-to-man, -man, right? And they're looking to try to get a quick left-right dodge, draw a slide, or some kind of uh, high probability shot. That wasn't one. He is, his angle was, was actually decreasing as he went towards the goal line extended and was being pushed, pushed behind, but he took the shot anyway. So, you know, again, that's gonna happen. Okay, now you're gonna look for a little bit of a, what we call a slow break. Going quickly are the Blue Devils, and they'll score, curling around. Brennan O'Neill, you can't leave him alone. Number 34 in white. Yeah, pays was, dividends for Duke. It, it was actually, I thought it was look gonna be a, a slow break, but it was really a, a, a nice broken clear where they brought it down and had wide open Brennan O'Neill behind the goal. Um, very smart play, uh, and the Devils are doing a pretty good job adjusting to that high level of pressure in the middle third of the field where Coach Poli said, we're gonna really try to really, you know, gum stuff up in there. O'Neill fakes high, gets Barn Barnes to bite, and then O'Neill drops it down low. Rubber finds the twine, and just like that, Duke out to the two goal advantage. Boston's offense sputtering out of the gates of half number two, Duke. Turning things around here, quarter number three. Your Boston will take Your position, please. possession, I should say. Lift it. Working with D'Alto, and D'Alto will have a shot off the back of a Blue Devil. Be beautiful, beautiful defense by the Devils right there. If you look at... Thank you so much. Right there, that was, you know, a really, really aware play on the rebound, trying to look at it from the vantage point of where am I situationally on the field? Where are my open players and how do I get get it away? And uh, that was just great um, awareness by, uh, I believe that was Fasoli. Beautiful play. Ben Johnson already with a goal today. He'll work it down low to O'Neill. Here's Zawada now as Zawada will go back O'Neill's way, those two. See, they're not, they're really, they're not, they're playing a zone, they're not, going behind and they're trying to again gum up the middle a little bit um, and really make Duke a little bit impatient and to make them you know throw passes in the center where it's all clogged up. Sloat with the shot and then he has a cannon. He does. Oh my gosh. It's just, yeah. He showcased it already today. Yeah he has such a good shot. Sloat passes it down another shot wide once again although Good Duke continues up. to back it up. Yeah, and that's again in a game, in a sloppy game like today, you can't lose possessions because you don't have a backup. Because you know you know you don't know when you're going to get the ball next. Not a lot of time to work with on the shot clock for Duke. It's been a long possession. Oh my! Top bins. What a snipe! That's an ESPN highlight reel there, Woo! right there. That was an incredible shot, and again a cannon from the from the freshman. Two underclassmen, Johnston and Sloat. Yeah, what he does, what did he do though? Right here, he gets a little bit of a step. One, just change of direction, loses his player. And that's what I was been talking about. You know, it does, it's not too complicated in a rainy day to get that freedom from your defender by just big using the mud. Yeah. You know, just go one way, break the other way. It sounds pretty primitive, but you know what? It works. And I think that that's what they have to do. It's also based on athleticism. And oh, by the way, he has a cannon of a shot that's about 98 miles an hour. You know, in the, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when he's on his back foot, it's you know, it's just nuts how, what a great shot that was. No, you're right on the ball there, David. You could see in that replay just a little bit of a roll, trying to be followed by the on-ball defender, and he just loses traction. Right. He can't get there in time. It frees the hands up maybe a little bit more than you would expect in most games. And that's just a dangerous spot to be when you have attackmen and midfielders like Duke yeah. who can stretch the field. Well, and that's why before, like, when I was watching Zawada, you know, he was behind and feeding and no one was covering him. And I, I, I looked in, looking at it saying that, you know, that the better play possibly is for him to actually go one-on-one -on -one try to get an imba imbalance, try to beat his defender, and then get someone to slide to fall down and where then, then forcing the slide and then moving it one more pass. 
But, you know, it's, look, these guys are all trying. These are impossible conditions to play lacrosse in. But, but fun, you know, if you. This Duke defense has picked up the intensity in quarter number three. The pass from Diolto looking for Perfetto, and it looks like the cross check is going to stop things. Yeah, I I didn't I saw that as a as a as a standard lacrosse check, and I don't say that again with any criticism of the rest, but I just didn't really see that um, that because his his shoulders were square, and he was playing straight up on his offensive player, and he used his body in order to 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 get that um, get that check done. Nice save from Jamison. There was a Terrier posted up right in position. Jamison looking to back the shot up himself. Good hustle from the youngster. However, has to get back in his crease. And, and again, Boston wanted to go quickly. I thought he won that. <laughs> I mean, it's like he the, 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 the Terrier player didn't know that Jamison was right on his tail and said, slow down. And Jamison's like, well, I'm, I'm going to go. Deed in. That would have been a pretty one. As yeah, midair, he lets it go. Pushed down. Beautiful ball movement. Sorry to interrupt. Beautiful ball movement on that. That was great. Dialto looking for his fourth. Curling. No, right now, he's just he's just looking to get some kind of advantage through a slip. Nice pass. The feed into the crease as Perfetto posted up. And that's not where you want Perfetto if you're Duke. Too close, too personal to Jamison, and Perfetto buries it. Yeah, but I, you know, I would I would bet if you watch right here, he's, he's open because. It's very hard to, to be able to come in and close him down exclusively in this mud right on the doorstep. A little bit of a, a huddled crowd here to support the Blue Devils and the Terriers on a dreary day in Durham as the hardcore fans, you could say, David, yeah. sticking it out. I've, I've watched a lot of games in that pavilion, and it's actually some pretty, pretty good... Uh, it's a pretty good vantage point. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I don't think that's the end of the world. I'd be in the covered pavilion or be out in the middle of a, of a tropical storm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'd be in the pavilion in a second. Um, but yes, it's good that it's there. Um, so you know, what have we learned? Well, we've we've been seeing a lot of change of direction dodges, simple change of direction dodges, allowing for opportunities. On that one, it was really just a matter of a lost assignment on the crease. Um, trying to get the ball through, trying to get it um, fed almost like that, but a much better pass. Uh, and I think it's going to come on down to those simple things. You know, use the bad conditions to your advantage in this game. And uh, hope, hopefully your, you know, your opponent is going to, uh, you know, make silly mistakes or turnovers. Sometimes that's all it comes down to. Perfetto passing it off is... Boston continu continues to share the great. rock. Great defense. That was great defense. And so that, I was I was worried they would call that. That that's what they teach you to ha how to play. And you can see that the offensive players are even trying slipping as they're making their dodges right now. Yeah, things are getting worse, not better, on the field here in Durham, especially as this game continues into the later stages. Yeah, a lot of wear and tear and, on Old Koskinen. And that was an expected, a really a, a very good and expected uh, dodge. I mean. Uh, uh, saved by Jamison. So, you know, uh, hard to pe blow it past Jamison at at that um, at that distance. But um, careless turnover uh, could have come out of the stick a little bit wrong on that one too. So one of those same things. You know, it looked like he just didn't know how the ball was going to come out, and it and it went down to the ground and uh, hit um, Brennan in the knees, and then went out of bounds. So. Duke's, Duke's all clog, clogging that, that center there as well right now. Rain has started back to pretty uh, intense levels again. Uh, it had given us a little bit of a break, but now it's back. Boston looking to take advantage of the unforced error for the Blue Devils. Working on the far side. Pass in, what a feed! Can't find the dump as Kelly was looking to go quickly with the quick trigger. He was posted up on that near post. Somehow the pass got through a crowd yeah. of Blue Devils and Terriers. Unfortunate they're not able to connect. No. Kelly once again with possession. This time Kelly feeding. Dodging a lot of physical play as he looks to flip it to the far side. This Duke defense has really ramped up the intensity and physicality, in my opinion, in this second half. Well, yeah, and they're 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 trying to they're trying to draw a foul. They're trying to work any kind of any kind of opening there. 
they did draw the foul. They did get the score, and that was a great possession. I don't know how he threaded that needle in there, but it was a beautiful pass. The defense from McGuire pretty closely knit as he was shadowing the goal scorer. However, the roll and the quick release, like you said, not a lot of room to work with. However, he threads the needle, and just like that, we're back to a one-goal game. Back and forth, back and forth throughout. We take another yeah, look. They're using their body, and then they're looking, and right there, you've got just a second of where McGuire, McGuire lost him, and he, you know he's going to look at it and say, just that one opening, that one foot in this rain is going to make that difference. It's just hard to recover. Kelly does redeem himself as he will eventually pick up the score on that possession as you're going to see Brower pick up the slashing call. It's going to be a minute of a man up for Boston. So all things going right for the Terriers except for the faceoff as Naso takes care of that for the Blue Devils. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think that they're going to look to control, slow down the tempo a little bit and go back to what was working right when they came out of the gate here in the uh, second half. Um, again, these are these are some of the most unpredictable sloppy conditions. So both teams are just trying to minimize their mistakes. 35 seconds on the penalty against the Devils, and they've got 55 seconds and counting on the shot clock to work with. So you got to think they're going to look to burn as much of that as they can. Boston not looking to press the issue too hard, it appears, at least so far. Yeah. So how do you respond to this zone right now? You know, this is one of those things where they're going, they're going to force it in. Uh, force, they're going to pack it in and force you to make perfect passes, rely on that skip pass, and that's usually the way you break a zone. Um, and they're just trying to get the right players on the field right now. Back to full strength. Zawada continues to set up behind the crease. He's looking to feed from that spot. Hasn't had a whole lot of success like you've been continuing to hit on. This time he'll work his way into the front of the crease as Duke looks to change things up. O'Neal on the swim. Some room to work for O'Neal. A little bit of a window. Wide enough for O'Neal to let it go. Backed up by Duke. I, I, yeah, I mean, that was an interesting possession. Duke waited for quite a long time to get other players on the field. They finally did, and they had 13 seconds to go on the clock. Um, so in my estimation, sort of a turnover. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, due to lightning getting closer and closer, we are Looks like play. both teams are going to head to the locker room Please as the weather continues to intensify in Durham, lightning becoming a factor. So it's going to be a weather delay here for a moment with 2 minutes and 43 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Duke leads 9 to Boston's 8 as we're going to head to weather delay. You're listening to ACC Network, Connor Young, David Keith. We'll be right back when the delay resumes. Welcome back to Koskinen Stadium. We've got just around three minutes left in the third quarter of this 9-8 tit-for-tat affair between the fifth-ranked Duke and 17th-ranked Boston University Terriers. Duke so far holding on to that one-goal advantage. Welcome back into the booth with former Duke attackman David Keefe. Once again, my name is Connor Young. And finally, the weather has ceased. It seems like it's going to be clear skies from here on out, but we've got an absolute gritty game on our hands here yeah, it's in been, Durham. It's been lunch pail lacrosse in, yeah. you know, in about two inches of rain. You're looking at uh, two teams that are separated by a goal. There have been sort of what I would call micro runs on each side. Both teams have a lot to work with in terms of their talent. The, the issue is how do you work against this field? It's about two inches of rain uh, falling. And so it's, it really comes down to which teams can simplify things. Yeah. They're dodging just to get a quick advantage and good shots. Yeah, two players that have been able to do that. Two graduate students on either side, both with hat tricks today, starting off with the Alto for Boston. Yeah, you know, you look, you're not really looking at anything other than skip passes in order to find the open man and to get some kind of rotation where you can get some kind of shot on goal with a good angle and using possibly the mud as, as a, or the water as an accelerator on your shot. And with Dyson Williams, one of the best shooters of all time, you know, he's out here right now. Anytime he's close to the goal, he's a complete threat because he knows how to play that in-close, tight game, and it really is so productive um, in all the games when you give him any, any room. So great, great thus far. I think the teams that simplifies their, the game and is able to really, you know, bring that, that simplicity to their game and slow things down is going to win. 
Williams and O'Neill both climbing the ladder game by game. So far, Williams after today at fourth place, 185, and looking to continue to grow closer to the top of the leaderboard. It's footing and you know uh, body position, all of those things you learn when you're young. Um, right. You know how to get a one step advantage in this in this sloppy conditions. Those are the things that are going to be the difference maker here. Um, it's not going to be like a run and gun game that you play in the sun when the field is perfect. There's going to be a lot of intangibles. Playing a little catch up here. Duke, they had possession as they were looking to kill off a penalty um, as Boston was on the main advantage. They ended up having a shot clock violation, which leads to Boston possession as we restart here with two minutes and 20 seconds left to go in quarter number three. You know, and I think if you're Duke right now, you're sort of channeling the UPenn game, and you're saying, you know, we right. were we were looking at loggerheads back and forth with UPenn. It was in the rain, and we just ran out of time. Came up with came up with some goal, you know, two, uh, not enough scoring opportunities. And right now, we got a tie game because you know BU's doing the simple stuff and making a difference. An equalizer for BU. They come right out of the weather delay, just like they did out of the opening gates. As you see this goal here, score here for BU, a huge one, David. Quick switch there but from behind, and, and it was a little bit of a lack of look, communication. And finally, you, know, just came, you have to have body pressure and hand pressure on the hands of the shooters when you're coming around there. And um, you, there just wasn't that, that kind of intense you know, right up there. Now, again, it makes it's very hard with the footings as it is right now to have that. Naso comes up with a really nice face off, gets it back over, and the Devils are guarding that possession like it's gold at this point. Um, right now, every possession matters, and they need to really take their time, both teams, in order to execute like that, that last play by the Terriers. How about the sliding Selly as well to go with it? You know, the weather may have ceased. Rain should be held on for the remainder of this contest, fingers crossed, but that playing surface still sure is still slick. And the bounce shot will be backed up by Duke O'Neill. No one threatening him, he'll keep possession. Yeah, uh, McIndory had his man clearly beat, and I, I think he got into in, in right in, took the shot. Looks like it was a trail check that got that got uh, got got in his way. So um, again, they're not playing behind, so it's playing a zone right now up top, and they're just trying to really clog up that center at, and make Duke make perfect passes to open open shooters. O'Neill finds Johnson. And Johnson unloads. And quick ball movement is the, is the key thing. You know, that's to just move, keep moving the ball against the zone, get them rotating, and then again, I, I think you're going to try to see that skip pass again because that's usually how you break a zone. Under a minute left to go in quarter number three. Duke once again will follow it out. They've got 13 seconds I, I like on the shot I like this possession clock. if I'm Duke, though. You, you know, you're getting shots on goal, and, and that's what you want. And you're, you're not, you're not you know, wasting this possession, so. 19 shots on for Duke, 16 for Boston. Looking for the quick shot as he spun. The shot clock was not in the Blue Devils' favor, and that's going to be a possession for the Terriers in this sideline. And is excited. And that's the challenge with the zone. You know, they, they're going to pack it in and they're going to make you make your shots, make you make your passes. And um, I give credit to uh, to BU right now. It looks like the, the momentum is a little bit on their side right now. And uh, the Devils have to adjust. I completely agree. The tides are shifting in favor of the Terriers in red today as they've got 10 seconds or so in the third quarter left to try to be the first team to break into double digits here in Durham. Good defense being played as the netminder will get a piece of it. The pass over the top stops short. He goes for the long clearance. The time won't allow it to be capitalized on as 9-9 our score. Duke and Boston all knotted up. One quarter left to decide things here in Durham. Coach Danowski and the Blue Devils getting ready to take on the fourth quarter and another ranked opponent for Duke in Boston. And that's been something that has at times been a struggle point for the Duke Blue Devils this season as you take a look. Three and two so far, looking to avoid drawing even three and three. Yeah, these things are so competitive right now in the top 20 that you know most of the teams that are in the top five have one loss, maybe two. 
Um, you know, and Duke is uh, is looking to really sort of look at there was an equalizer loss to Syracuse, a win against Denver. Um, and, you know, losing to UPenn in the rain was sort of a similar game to this game yeah. right there. UPenn was ranked 17th. Um, and so you gotta you got to factor that in and, 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 you know, look at it from that vantage point. They really can't afford to make a lot of mistakes here if they want to uh, advance into the brackets. Another huge win for Naso. Every single face-off just means that much more at this point in the game. And he is more than reliable in the clutch is Naso on the face-off. Yep. Yeah, no, he's, he's done well. I mean, the challenge is, again, you're in a, in the, in a complete swamp here. So, um, and it is a beautiful field, but when it rains like this, it just, it's gonna, it's gonna turn it into a, a, an absolute uh, deluge. 62% on the faceoff for Naso in the fourth quarter. You see how that ball just dies right there, even though that, that pass might've gone through and it, if the field was dry, but it just loses steam. They're gonna move that ball, try to, on the roll, the bounce shot. No good. Barnes in position. Don't know if he affected the shot too much, but he'll find the rebound, the ground ball, nonetheless. Yeah, I think Barnes sort of read that because it's such slow mo movement, you know, slow motion right now that when when Aiden Denez has tried that dodge, and he turned his back on, on, on the goalie for a second in order to pivot. Um, Barnes looked like he knew that he was going to take a shot pretty quickly on the ground and he was he was ready. Um, Aiden's got an amazing shot. He actually had four goals against UPenn um, in that comeback game. Um, but right now, um, that that ball is just hitting the mud and it's just dying right now. Um, some of it's dried up a little bit, a little bit of that water. Here's Sloat. Sloat, look at that ball go, just right across yeah. the screen. It's a blur when he, Sloat he, lets it go. He, he's got tremendous uh, body control and torsion. Um, so that when he's when he's when he's pulling that out there, it is just the ball is moving. Um, you know, Brendan is is trying his best from tack from the left side, but they're really bottling him up right now. And you know, I think that they're going to have to continue to be patient and crack this zone. Duke continues to look to pressure from long range. They're going to go back O'Neill's way. I think I said this earlier in the broadcast, but I love how O'Neill welcomes the contact of this physical Boston defense. He well, lowers the shoulder just like that, gets position, muscles his way in. This time he's stuffed, yeah. but he is tough to deal with. Yeah, it, the problem is that they're, they're, they're ready for it. Yeah. You know? and, they're, and, they, and they are. So the, the, some of the other players have got to try to get open when they're drawing the double on O'Neal, they got to they got to try to find the guys who are uh, who were wide open. There was Dyson got wide open there, on the doorstep. Four seconds left, and this becomes three, two, one. Yeah, and that's a big momentum sw the swish right there for the uh, for the Terriers because they basically just took on a full barrage of Duke offense and and uh, and met the mark. The 12th save today for Barnes. And yeah, O'Neal there, he had to make something out of nothing. Not a lot of shot clock to work with as this yeah. Boston defense has been sweltering, but they're having trouble on the clear now. It yeah. hasn't been an issue until this fourth quarter. Yeah. It's beginning to be a problem. Yeah, they are. And and so, you know, again, composure is going to be a key thing for this game. Probably is going to be a one goal game, uh, maybe a two goal game. But, you know, Duke's got to continue to attack, even though that last possession was frustrating. They did take a lot of shots, and you know the old adage, you know, 100% of the shots you don't take don't go in. <laughs> uh, but they have to, they have to really make sure they're getting their good shots and possession through possession, and knowing that how frustrating it is to crack a zone, you know. 44 shots in the day for the Blue Devils, 21 of them on goal, just 29 for Boston, and there's 45. That one whizzes wide. Ben Johnston continues to look to get his hands free as we see Duke. They want to stretch the field, utilize some of their players that can do that and yep. have the pace to do so, and they're going to look to continue to do that against this zone. Yeah, and useful, you know, useful full time on the clock here. It's 31 seconds, so that, that could be multiple shots with a backup. Uh, but they need they need to really, you know, try to put in something that can effectively crack the zone. Nice feed inside to Williams. Played beautifully, active stick. That time, number 29, Trey Brown slides over and neutralizes Williams. Now Boston looking to set up shop for the first time of this fourth quarter, and they're more than halfway there. Brendan Kelly, he's got a goal today. 
Morale on the side of Boston High. They look to put together some solid offensive momentum. Defensively, they've been on the ball here in quarter number four. First time for Duke to be tested in their own end in the final quarter. Yeah, and you can see, like, you know. Off ball flag against Duke. Looks like number six, Caputo heading off. That's a costly, costly penalty here at this time in the game. Yeah. Still waiting on what the call officially is. Caputo takes the seat. Let's take a look back. Caputo on the ball handler. Tough to see what the call is there. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Um, it looked like the flag came on the other side of the field, so it's interesting to see Caputo being the one heading over. Nonetheless, it's a 30-second man up. Boston, they know they need to go, and they're looking to get going in a hurry. Shot comes through, saved by Jamison. Big save, biggest of the day for the freshman. Big save, and now they got to take care of the ball. You know, we're we're looking at every possession being a complete crunch time. Here's here's uh, Tyler Carpenter, it's one of the best ball carriers in the team, and you know maybe maybe they need to speed it up right now. Maybe they need a transition goal. There hasn't been any. Maybe they need to go for it, but right now, obviously. The numbers were on the Terrier side, so makes sense to slow it down and just keep methodically going after it. You know, possession after possession, trying to crack the zone. Back to full strength. Every possession at this point in the game, that much more important, feels that much more valuable as Duke looks to make this one count. Shot wide. Yeah, they just got to put the, get put it on there. Taking a lot of shots, they're just missing. They got to get them on cage. Possession stage with the Devils. O'Neal. Working the near side. What a move. And the score, Brendan O'Neal. He's made a career off plays like that. And a huge score for Duke. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful play. I think it was just that quick change of direction and getting that player to fall down or, you know, and loses, loses fitting again. Yeah. Beautiful save, you know, great defense leads to good offense. And then O'Neal, again, a change of direction is what we we're talking about. Here you go, player slips and you get you get the advantage. So using mother nature and what the, she's given us today in order to uh, yield the goal. And I think that's a simple, that's what I say, simplify the game, just change the direction. That's really all you gotta do when something's this, slip, this, this outrageously uh, wet, you know? We've continued to talk about using the field to your advantage on offense, and we've seen defenders have a hard time trying to stay on their feet. We see it there. The shot from O'Neal is what really impresses me on that play, to yeah. have to release it at that angle as Boston looks to go down the other end and take advantage quickly. Jamison made a really nice save on that. He, he read them coming around the post, and he, f he figured it out pretty quickly what was going to happen. Now, if I'm Duke right now, I might slow it down, but then again, they haven't pushed it. Um, for transition, um, they did just score a goal, and sometimes it, you know you do get flurries. Nace was still out there, uh, but now they have 59 seconds, so okay, they're going to push it back. No one's guarding, guarding uh, Zawada behind, so they're going to do the same thing that they did, and I would do the same exact thing, you know, just try to get an imbalance, try to get a quick change of direction on some of these defenders and get them to fall down. We talked about momentum going in favor of Boston earlier in this fourth quarter. The pendulum has swung in the opposite direction. A couple nice saves from your freshman netminder, and now a goal from Brennan O'Neill. Another offensive possession. As Duke looks to compound things here in quarter number four, they're going to have to check back as O'Neill. It's a risky play for them to come all the way out there on O'Neill. So now they're going to have to look at. Ball dropped. Yep. EU with possession on the far side, and they're going to test Jamison once again. Jamison really coming alive here in quarter number four. It's the most consistent action he's seen, and he has looked great. Yes, yeah, so you just saw the right there. They they brought it down, and the the BU attackers held their hands up, and which was a sign to say slow it down. Let's get all our guys on the field. Let's get the right subs subs on, 
and let's attack this man-to-man. -man. Again, we, Duke's playing a whole different kind of defensive scheme. Um, they believe that they match up better player to player, and they've, they're have they relying on the scout versus the typical zone. A lot of teams will go into a zone in the rain like this because the footing's so bad. So, you know, we'll see how the – is it a gamble or is it is it an amazing call from, from Duke? Niedringhaus with one already today. He scored just ahead of the weather delay. He'll pass it off. So they're going to work behind Jamison. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Six minutes, 15 left in this matchup. And that one squeezed through. Answer back for the Terriers. Shot for shot we go in Durham. Terriers goal scored by number 23. Take another look here. Curling around and back-to-back -back goals. Duke the first, Boston the second. 10-10 our scoreline. We've got a heater here in Durham. It's a barn burner in Koskinen as we take a look. Brennan O'Neill, the first goal of the fourth quarter for Duke, followed by another for Boston. Bork able to do the job to find the equalizer, David. Yeah, Bork comes in, he just sneaks it by, and the goal line extended. Got a, a slight, uh, the, you know, step on, on the defender, and, uh, and you know, again, in these conditions, that ball dribbled in, but it went in, and that's, the, that's all that matters. So, you know, game on again, new game. Six minutes left, 10-10. We knew Barnes was gonna have to come up big for Boston if they were gonna play with the Blue Devils just like he did one game ago against the then supreme team in the NCAA in Army. And boy has he, 12 saves to his credit. And he's seen a bevy of shots slung his way, 47, 22 of those on cage. Jamison though, as things have moved on in the fourth quarter, he's made some nice saves that have kept Duke in it in the same light. Eight saves to the freshman's credit. It was a great back to uh, trail check right there by McGuire. And I'm just... 5.40 left here in quarter number four. Boston looking for back-to-back -back unanswered to give themselves the lead. It's been a while since we've seen the Terriers out in front. They've been playing catch-up after a white hot start to open quarter number one. Looking for the behind the back, off the cage. See what kind of, Ludem. got the bet, Tyler Carpenter here, one of the best point leaders on that. Uh, and really great save by Barnes, shuts down Brennan O'Neill right there. Um, Barnes keeps O'Neill in check as O'Neill they continue to look to go his way early and often in quarter number four. Barnes says no. Boston looks to set up once again. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if you're BU right now, you're really excited about how you're controlling the tempo of the, of the game. I think, that, uh, I think that the Devils, though, have played a lot of tough, tough games like this, so let's see what composure is like and how they are able to potentially get the ball back. Dialto stays with it. He's got a hat trick to his credit already today. and He's looking for number four. That's going to be a reset. And now they didn't give it a reset. Huh. That was interesting. I could have sworn that hit the, the goalie, but I think it needed to. Curling around for the Terriers. Back up top on the dodge. The roll gives him some room. That looks like it hit off a defender before it headed out of play, or might have hit it off his own terrier. Nevertheless, five seconds to work with on the shot clock, yeah. looking to make something out of nothing. Desperation heave, scooped up by the Blue Devils. They hang on, they're able to slow down this Boston offense, and now Duke looking to clear. Yeah, that was that was a really nice uh, possession. They, they forced them to take shots that were probably not gonna be scores and with, with Jamison playing the way he is. Although, costly turnover for the freshman Jamison. Look to go over the head. He makes a save to make up for it. He might have to make another. Ground bow goes to Boston, shovel shot. Not a good opportunity. They were trying to get rid of it as fast as they could. That time Meyer, the graduate student, just slinging it in the direction of Jamison. 
Luckily for the freshman, his turnover not capitalized upon quite yet, but scary, scary looks for Duke. Yeah, so we, when you're really looking at, he's he's looking down the field, and and again, it could be just that wet pet, a wet bag, as we call it, in his pocket, in his stick, and he just couldn't get the ball uh, at the right level. But then, man, what a save! Yep. To his credit, he gets back in the crease. He makes that save. Yep. D'Alto, all alone, the graduate student, just the freshman to beat. But Jamison gets the better of that affair, from one net minder. To the other, let's take a look at Barnes, who's been absolutely phenomenal in between the pipes for Boston today, as he was last game against Army. He's been fantastic holding things down in the back end. Yeah, you can, you're going to see him coming up. Again, it's all about body position. He's, he's able to get down low really quickly, and he's really reading the ball well um, from all angles. So, you know, that's the kind of thing where, you know, when you're talking about, you know, uh, Brendan O'Neill coming down on you with that catapult kind of shot. He's ready for that. And, uh, you know, I think that um, the shooters are having a hard time today. Part of it is blaming on the weather, but part of it is just that the great, great goaltending by both, both sides, especially Barnes. We really have seen it on both ends at different points. And they're going to be continued to be leaned upon as we head into the back half of this fourth quarter. Three minutes, 15 seconds left to go. The freshman in Jamison and Barnes on the other end, they are going to be key factors for both these teams as they look to pull out what has been an absolute back and forth heavyweight fight, a slugfest here in Durham. Yeah, and, and so what I what I would expect them to do is probably spend a, quite a, not try to shoot too early. I don't, I wouldn't, if I were them, try, I would try to get as much time under my belt, under their belts, to get a good shot, get, score, and then force Duke Jameson force force, got a piece force of Duke to have a, uh, um, a, 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 a a a possession change like they just did. Um, they probably they might have shot a little early on that one. I would have potentially used more clock. Um, tie game. Clock becoming a factor. Yeah, you more really and more so. Really, you have to look at clock management, and you have to like be able to to look at it and think not only about the play you're in, but what are you setting up for the next play. Um, and that's the key. So right now, 59 seconds, you know, you can use up a good chunk of this. And then with Jake Naso, potentially, if you score, then right. they, they have to beat Naso, and they didn't want to have to beat Naso. So that's how I'm, I'm looking at it. They're probably also, there haven't been really many timeouts um, for strategy. So shot score! Back out ahead, go the Blue Devils! A snipe from the freshman! Yeah, just a beautiful play here. It come down again, a little bit of a of a pick up top. All of a sudden, skip the pass, and there we go. Ball game on that one. Beautiful, beautiful shot right where they want it. And um, you know, Johnson was amazing on that shot. You know, you look at it as probably 95 miles an hour. Now looking to the face-off X. I talked about this stat earlier. Naso, 66 and 41, a 61% in the fourth quarter in games decided by two or fewer goals on the X. And there you go. So now you're, now you're looking at things like timeouts. You're looking at, you know, there are 71 seconds. Basically, they have the full, the full amount of time here, close to it. Um, and they can really they can really dominate and work to get it. They, they want to leave this by scoring a goal, but do it well into the possession. Um, what they don't want to do is have the ball go down, you know, to in, in 15 or 20 seconds and then have the Terriers score if you're Duke. So you also have to be wary of the Terriers, who are one of the best teams, if not the best team in the nation, in causing turnovers. Now, primarily that comes on the ride, but defensively in their own end. They certainly are looking to put the ball on the turf here. Duke going to be extra careful with possession. And like you said, they are more than happy with killing some clock here with a minute 15 left to go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they got it, they want, they've got the ball. And they're, de they're also giving right now, they're giving their defense a rest. Yep. I mean, their defense has been playing a lot of defense. So this is, this is sort of what I expected. Um, 
pass from O'Neal. Looked to go inside. It would have been a nice find. However, intercepted by the Terriers. Five seconds left for Duke. And they're just going to fling it back. So possession will go to the Terriers. They're going to have a chance to respond. We saw Ben Johnson, the freshman, find the go-ahead. Goal number 11 now. The attention turns to the freshman in between the pipes for Duke in the netminder, Jamison. And you know, just watch the middle middle third of the field. Everyone's locked off down at this end, at the at the uh, Terriers end. So they're going to try to really make make a long pull, bring it over, and then get it over to where their short stick with 32 seconds left. I would watch for a timeout probably from the Terriers. Um, they're telling them to get it in the box and then call the timeout. There you go. Yeah, there you go. The timeout comes just on cue for Ryan Poley as, yeah, they were able to find the clear 21 for 24 on the day for Boston. A timeout follows. They want to talk over this possession. It's a big possession here for BU. Yeah, and, you know, it's an important to underscore, like a freshman, like having that mentality, yeah. it's, not just, it's not just having the skill and it's not just having the instincts to take the shot, but it's having the presence of mind right. to be able to make a big shot at a big moment. And that you can't teach that, Yeah, you know? You just can't teach it. So I think, you know, watching him play like that is really a gift for a coach. It's like, wow, you know, most freshmen, you know, many times they're trying to still figure things out. After freshman year, going into sophomore year, he's taking a leadership role. You got to give credit for this Duke coaching staff at being so good and picking those recruits out. Here they go. We got a we got a switch right there, and their man their man playing man to man short stick on short stick. They're going back to McGuire. Feed inside. Jamison gets a piece of it. A lot of contact. Right, no Jim. whistle comes through, and Jamison's gonna hurl it. Back, net minder to net minder as they go back down once again. One second left to go. Duke hangs on. The Blue Devils come out on top. Incredible game. It's Koskinen crowd that stuck it out through the weather. They yeah, get to go home happy. Mother Nature threw a curveball at both teams, and wow. You know, you got to give them all credit for that. Next up. We take a look. So here's here you go. Like they're trying to get it in, and what happens again? Jamison comes up big. The ball hits the ground, dies a little bit. Looks like as it comes down, he gets a piece of it actually before it hits down. Uh, great, great positioning on yep. his part. He's psyched because you know he didn't want to have that turnover before. And you know this is how these 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 games are very unpredictable when you're in a when you're in a you know a huge uh, rainstorm like this. And for Duke, they're able to pick up another ranked win, avoid that even record against ranked competition, a huge tidal wave of momentum going in favor of the Blue Devils. Yeah, no, I think this is a big win for them. Also, going they they have Virginia, they have Carolina, they have Notre Dame. They're all coming up, so they really needed to lock this one in in order to 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 keep going with momentum. For David Keefe and our entire crew, I'm Connor Young saying so long from Durham, North Carolina, where the final score is 11 to 10, Duke Blue Devils. This has been a presentation of ACC Network Extra. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon.